What is going on college basketball fans? Today we are going to be ranking every Sweet 16 team from 1 to 16 based on how likely I think it is that they can bring home the national championship this year. I'm ready to get started. Just want to say subscribe if you guys are new. We do a ton of college basketball March Madness coverage here on the channel. Hit that like button if you guys enjoy. Let's get started. All right, so here are my rankings. And again, reminder, these are based on how likely I think it is that these teams can win the Natty this year. So how they've looked, how good their team is does play a factor, but also what is their path looking like to the national championship? Do they have an easier path or is their path really hard? Are they going to have to be a lot of good teams? to bring it home so all of that is going to play a factor in these rankings and with that being said my number one team on these rankings is the Alabama Crimson Tide now not only are they a super good team and have everything it takes to win a national championship they have really good guards really good depth they have physical big men they bring in boards uh, they have a star player in Brandon Miller they have everything it takes to bring it home and also out of these 16 teams Alabama definitely, in my opinion, has the easiest path to winning it. I mean, they have San Diego State up next, a tough defensive physical team. It's not going to be easy. None of these games are going to be easy, not even against a Princeton. Like, the way Princeton has been playing, it's going to be hard. So there are no easy games, but that's, you know, I, I feel like Alabama is going to win that game. I just feel like they have an easier path to the national championship than any other team and they are the top overall seed in the tourney and Alabama like I said everything it takes to win a national championship they're coming in here at number one at number two we do have Texas a little bit more a little bit of a harder path for sure I mean they have Xavier coming up that's not an easy team to face and then they're most likely going to have to face Houston in the elite eight and then they'll have to face whoever comes out of the west region as well in the final four and then you know if we're going purely off chalk they'll probably have to face Alabama in the championship game and that's not going to be easy to win as well so Texas does have a tough tough path and, and that they didn't play their best against Penn State like I, I definitely feel like that one was a little bit closer than they would have liked it to be but Dylan DeSue has been a beast for them ever since the Big 12 tourney started and they're going to need him to continue to do that they're going to need Serge Ibari Rice to continue to be that elite six man best six man in college basketball and provide some scoring off the bench they're going to need Marcus Carr and Tyrese Hunter to step it up a little bit more and provide a little bit more scoring they could need Timmy Allen Christian Bishop to to help as well like if this team is at its peak and Tyrese Hunter especially can turn up for these next couple games for the Texas Longhorns down the stretch of this tourney Texas could 100% win the national championship and that is why I have them coming in here at number two at number three I do have the Yukon Huskies they have looked amazing so far this tournament especially that second half against St. Mary's they looked really good and again a lot like the first two teams they have everything it takes to win a national championship good depth good guard play solid bigs and shooting playmaking like they have everything it takes on this UConn team and as a four seed that is why they're coming all the way up here at number three for me I definitely think that they deserve this spot I think that it's very possible UConn can win the national championship this year they do have Arkansas coming up next now that is not an easy game whatsoever that Arkansas team just knocked off Kansas and Eric Musselman is a super good coach especially in March Madness do not count out the Razorbacks but UConn after that I mean compared to some of the other paths like is not looking very hard like every path is going to be hard like I said before but I, I do think that UConn can get through that path and win it all. Definitely, definitely very possible. At number four, I do have the Houston Cougars. Now, this was my champion pick for my bracket, and they're coming in here at number four. Do I think that they can still win the national championship? Yeah, of course. But they have had some injury problems with Marcus Sasser, Jamal Shedd. They have been playing through those, 
but are those going to play a factor when they have to play a Miami or a Texas or a UConn, UCLA, Gonzaga in the Final Four? Like, it, it could, you know, it could play a factor, but we will see how they play against Miami and if they can win that game even. Because up to this point, they struggled against Northern Kentucky in the first round, and they struggled against Auburn in the first half of that game. Yeah, they pulled away, and it was mostly because of their defense, but are they're, they're going to need to pr be a little bit more consistent because if they play like they did against Northern Kentucky and against Auburn, if they play like that against a Miami or against a Texas, they will not win those games. So I... You know, Houston, I'm worried about them. They still have all the potential in the world. Like I said, this still I still like them for the same reasons I did when I made my official bracket, and that is that they have a lot of 3 and D players. They play the, some of the best defense in college basketball. They can hit the shots. They have a star backcourt, and that is what you need. You need good guards, and they have an NBA level power forward on their team that can dribble uh, is a super good athlete uh, you know can shoot the ball stretch the floor at the four-man position and Jairus Walker like Houston again has everything it takes to win a national championship and they could definitely do that number five I do have Gonzaga and I feel like after that TCU game they definitely had to bump up on my list a little bit, maybe a spot or two. Like Gonzaga looked really good in that TCU game in the second half because in the first half they were struggling to make any three-pointers. In the second half they were lighting it up. And with Drew Timmy on that team, he has so much NCAA tournament experience. It is crazy. That can definitely play a factor in these games. And... Gonzaga when they are shooting really well and all of their guards are playing at their best Gonzaga is definitely a top five national championship contender as far as the teams that are left at number six I do have UCLA right behind Gonzaga they play each other this weekend uh, in the sweet 16 and Wow, both these teams are really good. It's going to be a fantastic game. A rematch from the 2021 Final Four game where Jalen Suggs hit that half-court game winner. Um, you have players that are going to be in this game that have played in that iconic game uh, in, for each team. You know, Tiger Campbell on UCLA, Gonzaga had Drew Timmy in that game. And again, UCLA, they have really good guards, right? Hami Hawk has uh, Tiger Campbell. These are veteran guards. Uh, and the only thing, they do have an injury in uh, Clark, and I think that that hurts them a little bit, and that it is maybe one of the main reasons they are below Gonzaga if they did have Clark on this team I feel like UCLA would be a spot or two higher on this list but they do come in here at number six at number seven I do have the Creighton Blue Jays now Creighton have played really good especially in that Baylor game they looked fantastic they have I've been saying this all year, Creighton has one of the best starting fives in college basketball. I mean, they have a really solid starting five that can, hit. when they are on point, they can hit very contested threes. Guys like Baylor Shireman, Ryan Nemhard, uh, even Trey Alexander. When Trey Alexander is going on this team, I kind of believe that him and Arthur Kaluma are the X factors for this team because you kind of can't expect Baylor Shireman, Ryan Nemhard, and Ryan Cockburner to be on. But when Arthur Kaluma and Trey Alexander are going to, this team has national championship potential. Now, they are coming in here at number seven because they do have kind of a hard path. I mean, playing Bama most likely in the Elite Eight is going to be tough, but if they can get past Princeton and then get past Bama, I feel like Creighton can beat anyone. They can beat anyone if they can knock off Bama, and they just knocked off Baylor. They looked amazing, like I said, when they did it, and that Creighton has shown that they have potential, and they are coming in here at number seven. Now, I do want to mention my top seven are teams that I can really see realistically bringing home the national championship this year. 
8 through 16, I mean, anything's possible in March, and we've seen that especially this year uh, with all the insane upsets and the craziness. It has been a really good March Madness. Anything can happen, but in my personal opinion, 1 through 7 are kind of the more realistic options to win the championship this year, and you could maybe cut Creighton out of that, but I think that there is a, sl a sliver more hope for Creighton winning it all than some of these other teams so that that's kind of my cutoff for kind of the realistic and I just kind of wanted to mention that but at number eight I do have Kansas State I think Kansas State you know anyone in the that east region Kansas State Tennessee Michigan State and Florida Atlantic to me all four of those teams collectively have an easier path than almost anyone else except for Alabama. And I just think, like, whoever comes out of that region, they're going to have, you know, I, I feel like I, they won't make the national championship game. I feel like they'll make the final four, and then that will be as far as they go. But Kansas State... Day, I feel like has some potential to maybe win it over some of these other teams because of their star players. I think, you know, with Marquise Noel and Keontae Johnson, those are some star players that can take over games. And we saw that against Kentucky. They really took over. And I feel like the underrated aspect of Kansas State's team is really that they have guys who can come off the bench and provide very solid minutes for them. Like, I was very worried about Kansas State having to go up against the really good big men and Mar in March Madness, but Naquan Tomlin has really proved that he can hang down there and defend these really good big men. He showed that against Oscar Shibwe. So Kansas State, I have here coming in here at number eight. And really, Tennessee and Kansas State, you could flip them around if you wanted to they were like 8a 8b they're both kind of almost tied for me like Tennessee I could definitely see them potentially you know maybe Tennessee more so than Kansas State has a chance to get to the championship game if they get to the final four because say they have to go up against Alabama in the final four they have beaten Alabama earlier this year so they've proven that they can do that but I think the, the big worry with me here, and the same reason I knocked UCLA down a couple spots, Tennessee would probably be 7 or 8 if they had Zakai Ziegler. Like, Zakai Ziegler was really good this this season, and I, they're really missing him right now. Like, especially with how good they have played in this tourney, if they had Zakai Ziegler, they may be, they had a lot more potential to win it all this season. The way their defense have been playing, um, they've played to their peak. Like, we have been waiting for Tennessee to play at their peak for so many years in March Madness, and they are really playing good, and it just sucks that they have an injury with one of their best players, but I still believe that this Tennessee team could make the Final Four. I just don't know if they can make it any further, kind of the same thing as Kansas State. At number 10, I do have Michigan State, again, from that East region where I kind of feel like Michigan State probably can just get to the Final Four. I don't really see them getting much further, but they can definitely get there. They kind of have a tougher path because they have to knock off Kansas State first. They could definitely do that. Like I said, they can get to the Final Four for sure. Um, but then they're most likely going to have to face Tennessee and then probably in Alabama. Like, that's a kind of a tougher road here for Michigan State than it is for Tennessee, who gets to play against the Florida Atlantic team first. Um, so I, that's why I have Michigan State here at number 10. But I still have them up here at number 10 because I believe that they can get to the Final Four um, because of Tom Izzo and how good he is at strategizing for these other teams he takes away the other team's best player he doesn't let you beat them in that way and he uses whatever strength it is that he has over the other team he uses it he knows how to find it i trust in Izzo, and i think they could definitely get to the final four i just don't think that they i don't think tom Izzo has the team this year that can win it all and that's why they come in here at number 10 at number 11, I do have Xavier. Xavier has a very, very tough path. And 
to be honest, they haven't really played that great throughout the tourney. I mean, they looked really good against Pitt offensively. Defensively, you know, not the best. And they didn't look that great at all against Kennesaw State. They escaped that one. Survive in advance, you know, credit to them. But they, they didn't really look good against Kennesaw State. Against Pitt, they looked really good offensively. And they have a really good record whenever they can score over 75, 80 points this year and that's kind of what it's going to take for them and I worry going up against a team like Texas are they going to be able to get enough stops in that game and are they going to be able to score that many points over on a very good Texas team and even if they do get past Texas by you know with their offense are they going to be able to score 70, 75, 80 points on Houston, who's one of, if not the best defensive teams in the country? I'm not so sure, and and I think that that would be a, a tall task just for Xavier to make it to the Final Four, and that is why they are coming in here at number 11, because if it's that much of a task to get to the Final Four, it's not going to get in any easier from there if you want to bring home the national championship. So that is why I have Xavier here at number 11. At number 12, I do have Miami in kind of a similar s situation here. I mean, they have to get past Miami, or they have to get past Houston first, and then either Texas or Xavier. It's a really tough road just to get to the Final Four, and I just think between Xavier and Miami, it's a really hard four. You know, you, these from the Sweet 16 to the winning the national championship, you need to win four games. That is a really tough stretch of four games to win in a row there for these teams to get it done. At number 13, I do have the Arkansas Razorbacks, and Arkansas is really above San Diego State for really because. I think that they have the coaching to be able to get it done. I just don't know if this year's Arkansas team can get it done completely and win the national championship. If they can get past UConn, they would skyrocket up my list because you see how high I am on UConn right now. If Arkansas were able to get that one done, they, they would skyrocket. I would say, okay, this Arkansas team... They can get it done if they can continue to play like this. And if they continue to play like they did against Kansas, they probably could. And the thing is, they had guys like Nick Smith Jr. who wasn't really scoring that much in that game. You know, Ricky Council wasn't that efficient in that Kansas game. So they could probably play better than they did in that Kansas game. The only thing I worry about is their size. Like, are they going to have enough size to compete with this UConn team, or is Devo Davis going to be able to have another takeover type game against this UConn team with these really good defenders on UConn? It's going to be tough, and Arkansas has a tough road. I think it's impressive just that they got to the Sweet 16. They could definitely get farther. I just don't know if they can bring it all the way home this year. Next up at number 14, we do have San Diego State. San Diego State, I feel like they have, um, out of everyone in the uh, South region, they have the tougher path because they have to face Alabama first. And facing Alabama, they, they're, you know, you see they're my number one, so obviously it's going to be a tough spot for them. But if they can get past Alabama, then who can they be, right? So it's going to depend on that first game. I just don't know if they're going to have enough offense against this really tall, lengthy, strong Alabama team. Are they going to be able to provide enough offense in that game? Because you know San Diego State's going to play really good defense, but can will, will they have enough offense to be able to beat Alabama? That's going to be tough, and that's why they come here at number 14. At number 15, we do have Florida Atlantic, and Florida Atlantic, they honestly have not looked that great this tourney. They're coming in here at number 15 because, you know, they barely scraped by FDU, and I will say, yes, FDU was a 16 seed, but when you are a low seed like that, you're coming off of one of the biggest, in my opinion, the biggest upset in March Madness history, you are going your confidence is through the roof, right? Your confidence is through the roof. So your next game you play, you are going to play like at your 
absolute best and Florida Atlantic got that from FDU and they still came out on top so I credit them for that it is still a very good valued win in my opinion and they beat Memphis in that first game on a buzzer beater a fantastic game but I just don't know if they're going to be able to get past Tennessee. Yes, in my Sweet 16 bracket, if you guys watched that, I did pick Florida Atlantic to beat Tennessee. But that is, you know, a big upset pick on my part. Like, it, it is a big upset because Florida Atlantic is going to be hard for them to score inside on Tennessee with ten, Tennessee's really good defensive front court. They're going to have to make a lot of threes just to win that game. And then on top of that, they're going to have to... I just don't know if I see Florida Atlantic. Like, I think their peak this season is Final Four. If they get to the Final Four, I don't see them getting any further than that. They're coming in here at number 15. At number 16, I do have Princeton. And Princeton, you kind of expect they would be last place on this list. I mean, we saw last year the first ever 15 seed make it to the Elite Eight. They could maybe become the second but I think Elite Eight is probably Princeton's peak this season. I don't see them making it to the Final Four. And I think every other team on this list, their uh, peak is at minimal to get to the Final Four. Where Princeton, I feel like their peak is to beat Creighton, make it to the Elite Eight, and then lose the next round. But that is going to do it for my Sweet 16 rankings. Let me know what you guys think about them down below in the comment section. Also, let me know who your national championship pick is at this point. And yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching.